became the ornamental centerpiece of a massive landscaping exercise. Find out which county this historic oasis is in in just a few moments. It's the call of home that's luring today's buyers out into the country. And we've got some stunning properties up for grabs with bags of potential. It is a really cute house, isn't it's it? It's got a lot yeah. going for it. But one place in particular could see them really going to town. Could do a workshop upstairs if yeah. you wanted. Or even a master bedroom with an ensuite. <gasps> Steady. I'm in North Yorkshire at the Studley Royal Water Gardens, which provides an elegant setting for the ruins of Fountains Abbey. Now, back in the 13th century, this was the wealthiest and largest Cistercian Abbey in England. However, it clearly hit hard times when Henry VIII dissolved the monasteries in 1539. 230 years later, wealthy estate owner William Aislaby bought the abbey site and carved out this fantastic vista in what was a wild and wooded valley. It's still a stunning example of English landscaping at its finest. The average price of a detached property in North Yorkshire is just over £260,000. Now that's roughly in line with the national figure. However, be aware that around Harrogate, you could pay a 10% premium for the good schools, transport links, and access to the glorious countryside like the Dales. Now, in the Dales themselves, characterful properties in historic market towns like Hawes and Settle, well, they're holding their value, whereas your money will go further if you look around Skipton and Hellerfield. So let's find out what part of this beautiful county has so captured today's buyers. Husband and wife James and Catherine tied the knot 24 years ago, and for 15 years they've lived in a three-bedroom terrace cottage within a busy village on the outskirts of Stockport in Cheshire. But with a retirement on the cards, they fancy making their holiday way of living an everyday reality. Over the last few years, we've, we've started going to more remote holiday places. And one of the things that was really marvellous was the fact that it was really dark at night. You know, so there was a bit of space around and there were no street lights and no cars going past. And there was something a bit magic about that. There's a fair amount of traffic from the A6, which is a major trunk road at the bottom of the hill here. Parking is an issue where we don't have a garage or a run-in and therefore we're looking for something that will meet those needs and at the same time accommodate Catherine's requirement to move back to Yorkshire. I was born in Yorkshire, I'm from Leeds originally, although I've not lived there for a long time. Um, I've still got a real soft spot for the undulating countryside around Yorkshire. Having been in lots of different places around the UK, I still come back to the fact that Yorkshire is the most beautiful county. It is, and it would be nice to have a small piece of that. This garden has always been slightly constricted by James's need for the man shed. So when we first came here, we built it together, so it was a nice project to do, and I enjoyed building the shed, but that's really on the space where my greenhouse should be. They have spent a lot of time renovating and remodelling their current home. But now James has retired from a career in retail and food buying, he's relishing the chance to get stuck into some more DIY projects. And since Cathy has reduced her work hours, she's putting crafting high on the agenda. I've worked full time all my life and suddenly I've got an opportunity to start to do some of these hobbies again. And I've got Lily, the gorgeous new granddaughter, who's also an excuse to do crochet blankets so she can roll around on the floor and toys and things like that. So it'd be nice to just have a space where you could work, come out, close the door and then go back in and pick up the work when you're ready to do it again. All that remains is to find out how much money Cathy and James have earmarked for their future Yorkshire home. The budget for the move is £400,000. We'll be searching for Cathy and James's dream Yorkshire property in and around the picturesque villages within the Yorkshire Dales, which is exactly where we're all meeting up to find out more about their move back to the motherland. James and Cathy, welcome to glorious North Yorkshire. Thank you. But tell me, why do you want to move to this part of the world? We're looking for somewhere 
away from towns and people, a little bit more isolated than where we are at the moment. Um, and we want a little bit more room, both in the garden and within the house. Lovely. And Cathy, you're a Yorkshire lass, aren't you? Originally. Originally yep. from Leeds? Mm -hmm. So how well do you know this part of Yorkshire? This particular area is all new to me. Really. Is it? Mm. So what are we looking for with this new property? We're looking for um, decent sized rooms rather than numbers of rooms. What about bedrooms? Any numbers in mind for them? Um, three would be nice. We could manage with two if they're doubles. Um, but sort of these houses that have four or five bedrooms to give you the space downstairs aren't really what we're looking for. Right. Okay, what about a project? Okay, so a little bit of work on this new Happy green to property? Yes. Happy to do work, yes. Do you mm. both do work or is this yes. one the expert? Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm the sort of enthusiastic apprentice. Are you? So That's I'm the good. one who hands across the hammers and, you know, holds the ladders and things like that. But I quite like that. Good team, then. Mm. We mm. try to be. A good team. Mm. Talking of teamwork, who's going to make the final decision with this next property, do we think? Well, it won't be me. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's quite clear on that, he isn't he, is, he is, but he knows that I'll make the right decision. Oh, look at that. Well, <laughs> that has to be the perfect answer. The perfect answer. Well, we have got three splendid properties lined up to show you. So, you. should mm -hmm. we get started? Yes. That would be great. Yeah. For a budget of £400,000, Cathy and James are after a traditional stone-built Yorkshire property, away from neighbours, that has two to three double bedrooms, space for Cathy's craft hobbies and the potential for a large kitchen diner as they are willing to do some renovations. Outside, the crucial garden should ideally have outbuildings to cater for James's DIY tools and workshop as well as a greenhouse for Cathy. We'll be cruising to some wonderful country homes but until our buyers have had a guess first I'll be keeping my lips sealed as to the prices. And finally, we'll be going off the beaten track for an exceptional getaway in the form of our mystery house. We're starting our property quest in Wigglesworth, a small village at the southern edge of the Yorkshire Dales that lies in the Ribble Valley, a few miles east of the market town of Settle. Most essential and luxury goods can be picked up in Settle, but residents in the rural community of Wigglesworth do benefit from a well-regarded gastro pub, which also offers a post office service twice a week and lies right opposite house number one. So I brought you to, I think, one of the best sounding village names ever, Wigglesworth, to show you our very first property. Wow. Mm. It looks like it's well worth a look. Good. What do you think, James? First impressions? First impressions is it's quite nice, substantial house. It's 18th century, grade two listed, but gentrified in the 19th century. It was a farmhouse. Mm -hmm. It's not all yours. Mm -hmm. oh. It is semi-detached. Let's Come. go through, see what you think of the house itself to start off with. Yes, yes thank you. Yeah. As requested, this historic farmhouse is built of local stone, and the layout could also have the potential James and Cathy were after too. There are two large reception rooms at the front of the property, one a more formal sitting room and the other designated as the dining room, which is where we're starting our tour. So here is your first property. Wow. Mm. It's a nice big room, isn't it? So this was the old farmhouse. Right, mm. so this is the oldest bit. Yeah. I think if, if this were our home, this would probably be the snug. You know, you'd have big sofas and things in here and not use it as a dining area. You'll see there's a staircase there. Mm. This house has two staircases. Mm. Reason being the previous owners were going to divide it up into two cottages. Current owners saw it, fell in love, thought couldn't possibly do that. They want it as one home. Mm. But there are two staircases. So I'm telling you that now because you could remove it and okay. make this one oh, big room. room. Just well, a thought. Interesting. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So a good start? Yes, very it's cute. Yeah, you like yeah, it? It's cute. So okay. Far. I'll take you through now the kitchen. Thank you. So at the moment it has a, a country star to it. It certainly does. Mm -hmm. It is as small as I could go for a kitchen, I think. Yes. Is it? Yeah. To me the pine isn't as attractive. I think that's been a bit overdone in the past. 
But for someone who likes a project... Then it's a challenge. And just look at that old door. That it's door's lovely, beautiful. Isn't it? The original it? back door. Mm. Yeah. We'll find out what's beyond the back door later on and continue exploring inside. Right opposite the kitchen breakfast room is a spacious utility and the original staircase that takes us upstairs. To the front, the smallest bedroom is being used as a study, and at the back, not one but two family bathrooms serves a further four bedrooms. One has a single bed, but could make a cosy double, and the other three are all good-sized double rooms, including the one we've picked out for Kathy and James. So, I'm going to call this the master bedroom. Mm -hmm. Big, small, how do you feel? Um, it's nice it's all right. size, it's good shape. It's right. How do you feel about the house in general? Is it grabbing you too? I'm not sure. It's got some really cute little things about it. I mean, it is a really cute house, isn't it's it? It's got a lot going yeah. for it. Both our buyers should be thrilled to find out that this cottage has even more going for it outside, as that substantial door we saw earlier opens onto an extensive south-facing garden. Backing onto open farmland with views over the countryside, the grounds are made up of level lawns with formal borders and shrubs, completed by a large pond. What's more, there's a range of outbuildings already being used as workshops. Are you surprised about all this behind the property? Yes. Yes, mm. in a word. It's very positive. I love the garden. There's, Do you? Yeah, there's so much potential. It's beautiful. So who wants to go first with guessing the price of this property? I think property? I will. Mm. Go on, James. Not quite sure, but I would have thought somewhere around three out of five, given our budget. OK. I think it's probably going to be more like three, nine, five. OK. Asking price is under that. <gasps> £375,000. Oh, interesting. Well, that, that makes it very interesting. Yeah? That yeah. slightly changed your view it, on the property? It aged, because there's one or two things that need doing, and I would think that that would be uh, quite a sweetener, to be honest. Have a wander around the house again. Do Thank take you. a good look with that price in mind. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. let me know when you're ready to go. OK, we'll do that. Enjoy. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. A pleasant surprise to kick off on the market under budget for £375,000. The first property presents a generous semi-detached stone cottage with two reception rooms, a kitchen breakfast room and four double bedrooms. But let's not forget the large garden that has plenty of scope for Cathy and outbuildings are plenty for James. The kitchen needs some work to uh, really be what we would want but had lots of potential. The bedrooms were all good sizes, four double bedrooms and two bathrooms really made it a very attractive uh, proposition. And the aspect out into the garden is fantastic. I was really impressed with the space inside the house because it had got more bedrooms than I expected it to have. It got two really roomy sitting rooms. You can't help but love things like those stone lintels and the stone fireplaces and a beautiful door that leads out into the garden. And the garden is to die for. Even before you notice the outbuildings and the little stable and, and you know, all the little nooks and crannies, you just think, oh, this is so peaceful and so beautiful. Right, you two, how are you both feeling? I'm feeling very optimistic. That's good. It's really interesting, great. But yeah. if you're saving the best till last, then uh, you've really set a standard to beat. Ah, you have to wait and see on that one, won't you? Right, we let's will. go. During the industrial heyday of the late 18th and 19th centuries, the provincial landscape of North Yorkshire was transformed into a manufacturing hotbed, with a multitude of mills towering above the skyline. And today, a surviving mill in a small hamlet called Gale has been restored to its former Victorian glory when it was used to process timber. Where better to send our woodwork enthusiast James along with his wife Cathy? They're meeting volunteer Tony Ralph to find out all about the mill's changing fortunes. Welcome to Gale Mill, built in uh, 1786 or thereabouts. It mm -hmm. was built as a water-powered cotton mill oh, right. and it ran like that for about 100 years mm -hmm. and then it was changed to a, to a sawmill and the water powers all the machinery that's in really? the mill. Well, you'll be dead keen to find out about that, won't you? I will. Yeah. 
He's a bit of a woodworker. Really? Mm. Only an amateur. <laughs> Get your house bought up here and then you can be a volunteer. <laughs> right, we'll try hard. <laughs> After two centuries, Gale Mill closed for business in 1988. The campaigners secured enough funds to restore the Grade II listed building that had stood derelict for 16 years. Restoration took four long years, and the site now runs as a charitable trust, where volunteers have a key role in day-to-day -day operations. This is the workshop floor of the mill, where you see all the Victorian machinery around us which was all put in in 1879, and the Williamson Brothers turbine was put in downstairs. It's reputed to be the only in situ working turbine, definitely in this country and possibly the world. Wow. I'd really like to get some hands-on experience of your machines, if that would be possible, please. Follow me. Yeah. Thank you. The mill has been transformed into a working museum and heritage centre for woodworking and crafts, which provide an income to help run the site. Right, so you want to make something? Yes, please. Tony's supervising James and Cathy as they attempt to make a boot jack, a hands-free way to remove your muddy boots. First, the shape is drawn out on a thin piece of timber, and then it's cut out. Right, Mike, can you turn the turbine on, please? Water from Gale Beck powers the turbine, which drives the bandsaw. And finally, the rough edges are planed with a hand tool. I think we're about there. Yeah, that's looking good. Good. The acid test is... Oh. Yay! There's your muddy boot. Thank you, know, you very much. Thank you. It's been a pleasure working yeah, with you. It's been a pleasure having you. <laughs> thank you. It has really. With a handmade memento from their time in the Dales, we need to find our buyers a rural home to use it, so it's back to the house hunt. So this, this is our second property we want to show you. Well, it's really idyllic, isn't it? Lovely view at the back there of the viaduct. That's the Artem Gill Viaduct, from Settle to Carlisle. Right. Uh -huh. What do you think of the actual property itself? It's it looks as if it's good. been recently done up a bit. Mm. Um, Very it's... good observation. In 1987, it was made into a house. Mm. The upstairs was put on. But the current owners have done so much work to it inside. Transformed it and this garden as well. It looks beautiful. Yeah? It looks absolutely beautiful. Are you beautiful. itching to get in? Yes, Desperate please. OK. Mm -hmm. Again made of natural local stone, this detached home was believed to have been built in the mid-1800s, but has been sympathetically renovated and retains a real rustic charm. So welcome to your, well, I'm going to call it a cottage, because it's a big cottage, but it has a cottagey feel to me. It does, it, it does. does. very much so. I think it feels friendly. It does it? Yeah, and cosy, I think. OK, well, I'm going to go past the front door and take you mm. and show you the reception room through Thank here. You. I like to think of this room as a little bit of a snug. Mm. This is quite cosy, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. But windows on all sides, so good natural light during the day. Mm. And if you just two want to have a little look around the corner, have a peek. Ooh. Didn't expect that mm. to be there. That's mm. nice. Yeah. It's a good use of the space, isn't it, as yes. an office? Mm. So, size-wise? It feels, I'm not saying very small, but it feels a little bit small by the time I've put books and, you know, music and everything else into here. I think yeah. it might feel a bit small. I get the sense that the ground floor dimensions aren't quite working, but there is a little bit more down here in the shape of a utility room and a downstairs toilet. Then upstairs, an elegant bathroom sits alongside three bedrooms in total, all of which are well-presented double rooms. So, your master bedroom. This feels quite big for a bedroom as well. It feels more in keeping than downstairs. So, so far so good up here? So far, Slightly so redeemed ourselves. Yes. Let's head back down the stairs. Thankfully, both Cathy and James are warming to the property, and I've got high hopes with another south-facing garden. The majority of the third of an acre plot sits to the front of the property, with large lawns and deep floral borders, and this time we've got a workshop as well as a greenhouse. 
surrounded by its stunning countryside here, aren't you? Certainly are. Beautiful. That's really lovely. Well, let's talk price, shall we? See if that makes any changes. Who wants to guess the price first? You guess first. I would think we're in a national park, so my guess would be it'd be slightly more expensive than the first house, and I would guess at 395. Okay. I I suppose I'd go just slightly less than that and say 385. Asking price is 425,000 mm. pounds. Mm. Well, I'm not surprised because it's a beautiful house. We've spoken to the owners, they are aware of your budget. They would be happy to have a conversation with oh, you. That's always worthwhile, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Well, why don't you have another look on your own mm -hmm. and uh, come and see me when you're done? Okay. okay. Edging over budget with an asking price of £425,000, the second in our selection is a detached stone-built 19th century cottage that comes with a bespoke farmhouse kitchen diner, three bedrooms and a landscape garden featuring a huge workshop as well as a large greenhouse. How big is this? It's substantial, isn't it? Mm. I think you're quite taken with that. No, it's quite well planned. <laughs> <laughs> the man space was very attractive from the outside and even more so inside. It was very roomy, well lit, with electricity and plenty of space to do a number of things. It's an idyllic spot, but for me the, the layout wasn't quite as attractive as the first house that we saw. I would say it's a beautiful house that's been lovingly restored and it couldn't be in a more gorgeous setting. But whether it's the right house for James and I, I'm not sure. This really is the most glorious spot. I don't think I'd ever get bored with that view. Beautiful. Talking of beautiful, <laughs> are we done? We are, thank we you. Are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Seen enough? Yes. So that's it for today. We've shown you our two houses. We're now going to hit the road. OK, thanks very much. The second day of our house quest is upon us, and on a budget of £400,000, James and Cathy want to escape suburban Cheshire and flee to the North Yorkshire Dales. Still to come, a bumpy venture with the mystery house. How are you feeling? I'm shaken. And I meet a Yorkshire-based wool aficionado who refuses to follow the flock. You can't be driving around the countryside in the Dales on a hot and sunny day. And yesterday was no exception. So with our mystery house today, it has land, it has space, it has character, it has charm. It also has a view to die for. The question is, will it be a step or should that be drive too far? Let's find out. For the mystery house, we're travelling to the eastern side of the National Park destined for the rural outskirts of Thoralby, which is a sleepy place where characterful stone properties frame the village green. But despite its small size, key businesses include a shop, post office and public house. Beautiful, isn't it? What do you think of that setting? Is this what you had in mind when you thought you wanted to move to the Dales? Definitely, it's beautiful. Yeah? Mm. James? Yes, it's postcard pretty, isn't it? Well, that's good because the mystery house isn't that far from here? This would be the local village. Mm. But in order to get there, I've got to go in one of these. Oh. So if you'd like to jump in. Right. One of the main motivations for James and Kathy's move is to get away from neighbours. So for our last property stop, we're testing just how isolated they're prepared to go. Let the mystery house journey begin. To get to the mystery property, we're only travelling just over a mile away from the centre of the village. But it's a road trip only accessible in a 4x4, four four, along a single track that takes about 15 minutes, as we have to drive very slowly. Remind me never to use the word semi-rural again. <laughs> <laughs> On foot, it's a very healthy 20-minute walk, and what blissful surroundings in which to get out and stretch your legs. 
How are you feeling? Uh, I'm shaken. <laughs> <laughs> but not stirred yet. Not stirred oh. yet, no. Guess what? What? We're nearly We're here. there. I don't believe you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We were arriving at the mystery property from the back, but to fully appreciate the house in all its glory, we're heading straight around to the front. So, our third and final property, the mystery house. Mm. It looks lovely and looks like somebody spent some time and uh, thought it looks absolutely uh, new in terms of the windows mm -hmm. and uh, things like that. It was built in 1614. Um, it would have been a farmhouse originally. It's got the slate roof. But the current owners, they've been here for 10 years mm. and have beautifully restored the property. Should we step inside? Love to. With an incredible 360-degree uninterrupted aspect, this 17th-century detached stone-built property completely encapsulates a truly rural retreat. And assuming Cathy and Jane's nerves are settled from the drive, I'm very optimistic that the accommodation should fit the bill. And straight into the kitchen. Mm hmm Right. It's nice and airy, isn't it? Well, it's a nice layout, the way they've got it set mm. out. There's plenty of room to cook and also... Uh, and eat. There's room around the table for six if you had them. Yes. If they ever found the place. If they do the track. <laughs> Are you surprised at this kitchen as you walk through the door? I was thinking it'd be more oldie worldy and, you know, hops on the beans and things like that, but it is nice and modern and clean. And yes. roomy. And roomy. Yeah. So have you seen enough of the kitchen? Yes, I'd like to see some more of the house, yeah? please. Okay, I'm gonna go next door. All right. Into the sitting room. It's so not quite as large as the kitchen. It feels nice and cosy. Mm. So although it's not as big as perhaps we might have hoped, it uh, feels a nice room. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you this straight away. The right. way the house is, this is the only sitting room. Okay. Right? Something to think about, then. You do have a very large pantry, but it's like a walk-in pantry, and they sort of use it as storage. It's mm. huge, very cool at the moment with all the stone. All of, mm. yes. You also have a utility room as well, but you don't have another reception room on this floor. OK. Should we go upstairs to show you the bedrooms? Mm, thank Let's you. Turn. Despite the somewhat compact size of the living room, our buyers will be relieved to know that this property has grander proportions upstairs. There's a large four-piece family bathroom that serves the three spacious double bedrooms our buyers asked for. And we're heading to the biggest one. So at the moment, the current owners use this as the master, and the family bathroom is just next door. Mm. It's a nice room, isn't it? Yeah. It, it feels really clean and, and clear, yes. So do you like the property so far? Let's forget about planes, trains and automobiles to get mm. up that track. Mm. The actual house itself? Yes. yes. Love the location. The views are stunning, as you've said. The interior is really nicely done. The rooms are nice sized. OK, well, let's go back outside. James, you're going to lead the way, because I've still got some more to point out and show you. Oh, good. Thank you. I've got a sneaking suspicion that James is quite moved by our mystery house so far. And when it comes to our buildings, well, with three to choose from, there's plenty more for him to get his teeth into. So let's talk garden and land. Mm. But if you look over there, there's a field that's about 1.2 acres. And then mm. you've also got just under an acre behind us there. So mm. two acres in total. But the other thing I wanted to mention mm was these buildings to the side of us. Ah. So that's all with the property. They're actually very large. Mm. So if you wanted a huge man den stroke workshop... There's the one there. Yeah, you could convert those. Mm -hmm. Very good. But mm. what about the property itself? What do you think? It's lovely. It's lovely. The only, the only little fly in the ointment is the fact that the, the sort of sitting room's a bit snug. A bit too snug. Mm. If you look to the side, there's an attached part of the house, an attached barn. So you could easily extend through from that snug, mm -hmm. have a second sitting room, and if you were really keen, you could extend the top and have another bedroom with an ensuite, in fact, probably two. So, what price do you want to put on our mystery house? Cathy, I think you should go first. Mm. Well, I'll say 400,000. Okay. Mm. I think it'll be even more, I'm afraid. I think it will be 425. 
We are in the National Park, mm. which is, as we know, does mm. reflect the price of properties. Current asking price for the Mystery House is £390,000. Mm. So just mm. under your budget. Mm. Mm. Now, the owners are realistic. Uh -huh. You know, they've got to sell the property, so they are happy to have a conversation with you. I think we would like to have that conversation with them. Fantastic. Way to go. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is a very good reaction. So why don't you take another look? Start with the attached barn, because there is so much potential with that building. And then have another look around that beautiful farmhouse. Go okay. on. We'll do that. <laughs> Off Thank you. you go. Armed a budget at £390,000, the Mystery House is a 17th century stone-built converted farmhouse that offers a beautiful kitchen diner, three double bedrooms, three huge stone barns, and just over two acres of land, all wrapped up by awe-inspiring Dale's countryside at its loveliest. Well, it's a size, isn't it? It's huge. Very big. Lots of potential, though. It would be nice. I don't know much about construction, but to make it a living area downstairs, mm. and then you could do workshop upstairs if yeah. you wanted. Or even a master bedroom with an ensuite. <gasps> Steady. I thought the house looked really great. It's got fantastic views over the valley, and uh, it, it is in very good condition. Somebody's obviously spent a lot of time thinking through what they were going to do with a very old building. I think overall the property is the most comprehensive uh, of the three that we've seen in terms of our needs. When you first approach the house, you're actually coming to the back of the house, but as you walk round to the front, that's even more stunning, and the views just take your breath away. The rooms are all well renovated, but they look plain and sensible, and, and it looks like you could move in and just put your furniture in, and it'd be perfect. Idyllic and, at the same time, challenging. So, have you seen enough of our mystery house? Yes, for a first visit, thank you. Well done. Well, you've got a lot of thinking to do, so why don't you go off and I'll catch up with you in a little while. Look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you. If there's one thing synonymous with the glorious Yorkshire Dale scenery, then it has to be sheep and the area has a long and rich heritage of wool production. But today, the majority of wool manufacturing is outsourced overseas, having a detrimental effect on the long-standing traditional British crafts, such as spinning and weaving. But on a farm near Richmond, pioneering ethical entrepreneur Isabel Davis has successfully combined her passion for animal welfare with her sense of style. She's created a fashion label using wool from her own rescue flock of sheep. And every single part of the process relies on centuries-old British skills. So, Isabel, when did you decide you wanted to become a knitwear designer? Well, I have an organic home delivery company, and it was whilst meeting farmers who were supplying the organic company, uh, I discovered that wool in this country was being burnt and buried because the price they were being paid for it didn't even warrant, didn't even cover the shearing costs. So I decided really I wanted to do something using British wool. But immediately ran into the problem of, well, I can't use wool. I mean, I'm vegetarian, I can't use wool from animals that are going to be slaughtered. So, you know, I set about, about rescuing my, my own flock. So in actual fact, you have this dream of every process being done in the UK, but it's quite Absolutely. difficult to achieve that. It's like, really hard to achieve it. And it doesn't help that a lot of our wool is exported directly over to Asia, bypassing all, all our textile industry, so all, all the wool just gets processed over there. Yeah, I had no idea, perhaps, the jumper that I could be wearing would have more air miles than me attached to it. Now, are these some of your herd? Yeah, this is some of the herd. We've, we, we're shearing over here at the moment, if you want to come and have a look. Do you know what? Here. I'd absolutely love to. And are these the Shetlands? These are the Shetlands, yeah. Isabel started off with just six sheep, but now there are 600 in her flock, including rare breeds and Shetlands that create a very fine and soft wool. They are sheared once a year in the early summer months. I can't believe how quick this gentleman is. So incredible. incredible. How long does it take? I mean, about one and a half minutes. Is that all? Yeah. And I should think in this hot weather they've 
relieved when all that fleece is off yeah, them. absolutely. So we've got a fleece, actually, I mean, this looks beautiful. And it feels so soft. It's really beautiful. I mean, this fleece here probably will weigh about one and a half kilos. So by the time we've washed it, scoured it, um, all the grease will come out, it'll build you about 750 grams. And to me, what would that produce? That would produce a large chunky jumper or a couple of skirts or a suit. Once the sheep are sheared, a number of processes take place all within a 120-mile radius. The wool is washed, spun, dyed and weaved before getting transformed into one of Isabel's own designs, created in her home studio. So I can see you've got some examples in front of us. Is this all your own wool that you use? Yeah, this is all our own wool. This is from the Wensleydale sheep. It's very, very lustrous and silky. You can actually wear it against the skin because it doesn't have the prickly coarse hairs in, which are called kemp. And this is hand-knitted here in the Dales. And then once you finish with it, if you, when it goes back into the ground, it just totally biodegrades, which is unique to, to wool. It, it's an, an incredible fibre. And it keeps you warm in the winter yes. and cool in the summer. How important do you think it is for us now to know where our clothes come from? I mean, we feel like that about food. Do you think it's transferred to clothes as well? Well, I think it is slowly transferring to clothes, really. Uh, you know, as indeed all products and, and all industries, we, you know, we have to be sustainable. Championing the reinvigoration of largely undervalued homespun technologies, Isabel's business model is setting a unique trend, looking backwards for the future of fashion. And her customers have the added value that their wares are the product of a rather contented flock. So James and Cathy have now seen our three properties. The first one, in the middle of the village, I think really took their fancy. But then suddenly, at the mystery house, in the final hour, James says he'd consider discussing and negotiating on the price. Such a curveball, I didn't see that coming. So I've given them a little bit of time to think, contemplate, discuss, and let's see what their final thoughts are. <laughs> So we've shown you three sort of very different properties, mm. actually, but all characteristic of this area. Mm. Any favourites? It's testing because each one of them is beautiful in their own way. So each one of them delivers some of the things that we were looking for, but none of them delivers all of them. The last house as a property was the most satisfying for us. However, the journey to it from the public roads, it does need some thought as to uh, whether we could put up with that on a daily basis. Yeah. The first house, I think, is the other one that we would want to give serious consideration to. Um, whilst it was the most disappointing as we arrived at it, it got better the further we got into the house and into that beautiful oh, garden. The garden. Where do you go next from here? Is it worth a second visit for either of those properties? I think we need to get home, um, study the details, and then return to the Dales to have a look at at least two of the houses that we've seen. And hopefully we will look to make somebody an offer. Oh! Did I hear right? You did. Ooh. We would like to move sooner rather than later. And if we can reach a deal, because I always like to bargain a little, then uh, hopefully we can make somebody an offer they'll find uh, too good to say no to. Come on, you've got to tell me which one's closest, Rigglesworth or the Mystery House? I think, subject to talking to Catherine, uh, Rigglesworth would be the one that I think we're more likely to proceed with. Please enjoy that second viewing of both those properties. And if you've got any good news, you will share it with us, won't you? Certainly. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you both very much. And I'm glad we've helped you on the road to moving to North Yorkshire. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I'm delighted James and Cathy have decided that two of our properties merit a second viewing, especially that wonderful mystery house. But it is important when considering living in such a rural location, the practicalities of life in the country. But it hasn't seemed to put our couple off. And the good news is, Cathy seems as keen as ever to return to her Yorkshire roots, and James has decided that the Dales is the place where he wants to live. We wish them all the very best. Until next time, bye-bye.
James and Kathy revisited the mystery house as well as the first house, but sadly they decided against them both. However, the good news is that they've fallen for another property in Wigglesworth, which they're currently pursuing. If you'd like to escape to the country in England, Wales, Northern Ireland, Scotland, or even further afield to the continent and need our help, please apply online at bbc.co.uk forward slash be on a show. And became the ornamental centrepiece of a massive landscaping exercise. Find out which county this historic oasis is in in just a few moments. It's the call of home that's luring today's buyers out into the country. And we've got some stunning properties up for grabs with bags of potential. It is a really cute house, isn't it's it? It's got a lot going yeah. for it. But one place in particular could see them really going to town. Could do a workshop upstairs if yeah. you wanted. Or even a master bedroom with an ensuite. <gasps> Steady. I'm in North Yorkshire at the Studley Royal Water Gardens, which provides an elegant setting for the ruins of Fountains Abbey. Now, back in the 13th century, this was the wealthiest and largest Cistercian Abbey in England. However, it clearly hit hard times when Henry VIII dissolved the monasteries in 1539. 230 years later, wealthy estate owner William Aislaby bought the abbey site and carved out this fantastic vista in what was a wild and wooded valley. It's still a stunning example of English landscaping at its finest. The average price of a detached property in North Yorkshire is just over £260,000. Now that's roughly in line with the national figure. However, be aware that around Harrogate, you could pay a 10% premium for the good schools, transport links, and access to the glorious countryside like the Dales. Now, in the Dales themselves, characterful properties in historic market towns like Hawes and Settle, well, they're holding their value, whereas your money will go further if you look around Skipton and Hellerfield. So let's find out what part of this beautiful county has so captured today's buyers. Husband and wife James and Catherine tied the knot 24 years ago, and for 15 years they've lived in a three-bedroom terrace cottage within a busy village on the outskirts of Stockport in Cheshire. But with a retirement on the cards, they fancy making their holiday way of living an everyday reality. Over the last few years, we've, we've started going to more remote holiday places. And one of the things that was really marvellous was the fact that it was really dark at night. You know, so there was a bit of space around and there were no street lights and no cars going past. And there was something a bit magic about that. There's a fair amount of traffic from the A6, which is a major trunk road at the bottom of the hill here. Parking is an issue where we don't have a garage or a run-in and therefore we're looking for something that will meet those needs and at the same time accommodate Catherine's requirement to move back to Yorkshire. I was born in Yorkshire, I'm from Leeds originally, although I've not lived there for a long time. Um, I've still got a real soft spot for the undulating countryside around Yorkshire. Having been in lots of different places around the UK, I still come back to the fact that Yorkshire is the most beautiful county. It is, and it would be nice to have a small piece of that. This garden has always been slightly constricted by James's need for the man shed. So when we first came here, we built it together, so it was a nice project to do, and I enjoyed building the shed, but that's really on the space where my greenhouse should be. They have spent a lot of time renovating and remodelling their current home, but now James has retired from a career in retail and food buying, he's relishing the chance to get stuck into some more DIY projects. And since Cathy has reduced her work hours, she's putting crafting high on the agenda. I've worked full-time all my life, and suddenly I've got an opportunity to start to do some of these hobbies 